In this video, we're going to be taking a look at Bear Sophie for the Vintage Collection, particularly the very first version of her that is more movie accurate. If you've been on the channel for a while, you would know that I did a video reviewing the entire Clone Wars wave uh, about two years ago at this point, and that included the uh, Clone Wars version of Barriss here. And it's the same exact action figure as this uh, first version of her here. Uh, as you can see, there are some differences, minus the paint, and we'll go into some of those here in a minute. Uh, but this uh, first version of her has a very interesting history because the final product that we ended up getting is nothing like uh, what we originally saw when Barris was pipelined and initially revealed as to what the action figure would look like. And that's mainly in the in her uh, cape and her hood here. Originally, I think she was supposed to have a uh, soft goods hood. I'm not sure about the cape. I'm pretty sure that was soft goods as well. And it, quite frankly, I thought it looked like a really good action figure back in the day. Then for whatever reason, uh, when Hasbro showed that action figure between that time and the time the final product was released to retail, uh, they did a running change. Uh, we never got any samples out in the wild of the original with the soft goods hood here, but something happened along the way where it just didn't go through. Which is kind of unfortunate because I thought that looked really good. But despite that, I still really like this. Uh, this is a very good Barra Selfie and quite frankly it's uh, my favorite action figure of her that they've made. And it's probably the best one. So I'm personally a big fan of this character. It, I think it's unfortunate what Dave Filoni did in the Clone Wars series with her. Turned her into a traitor to the Jedi, basically. And then just seeing what they did to her in uh, Tales of the Empire, I thought was kind of insulting, quite frankly. Uh, so for all intents and purposes, when I think of Barra Sophie, I think of the old EU version of her before uh, the Dave Filoni Clone Wars. And I think in that version, she ends up uh, perishing during Order 66. And then there was supposed to be a deleted scene in um, Revenge of the Sith where she gets stepped on by the ATT. I think that would have been, uh, even though it's a tragic ending for her, I think that would have been a much more honorable ending for Bears here. So as you can see, the head sculpt, very nice. Has her uh, face tattoos on. At least I assume those are tattoos. I think the paint and the sculpting work are pretty accurate to the character. The hood, it's very nice. It, like I said, it would have been nice to have a variant with the soft goods hood, but this plastic robe is pretty good as well. And as you can see, it is one piece. Then for the rest of her, it's uh, pretty simple for the most part. And yeah, something else too that was pointed out was in uh, Tales of the Empire, they kind of took out the feminine features of Barris here while, you know, on this action figure it's very prevalent. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. It's just uh, interesting seeing the down roll spiral that or the downward spiral that uh, Disney and Lucasfilm have done with this character over the last several years. Then we have her belt there. Uh, for some reason I'm missing her alternative hilt that can go on her belt. Uh, it is in, I do have it on this action figure though. I think it fell somewhere on my shelf so I'll have to do some digging for it eventually. But it is the same exact uh, unignited hill is this one. The only difference is it might be more aligned with the paint scheme of her ignited blade here. Then for her skirt, it's uh, very poofy. And as you can see, it's much more poofy compared to her Clone Wars counterpart. And personally, I really like this as well. It kind of reminds me of like the old uh, Victorian style dresses. I'm sure that has some influence into this. And it looks really good. Something you see in the late 1800s, early 1900s. And then for underneath here, it's, you know, it's just her pants and her boots, and that's pretty much it. So 
terms of her articulation, uh, I might end up doing this a little bit later in the video, but you can pop her head out and then put it on the ball joint underneath where her uh, hood is here. But she does technically have a ball joint at the head, but while you have the hood on, you can't really do a whole lot. Uh, she does have hinged shoulders and then elbows, swivel wrists, and then swivel waist, and then swivel hips. Uh, I'm pretty sure those are swivel hips. Yeah, and then hinged knees and hinged ankles. And then for her accessories, like I said, the unignited hilt that does attach to her belt here. I'll just put it on real quick just to demonstrate that. I think I had some problems trying to get the hilt on her belt here, and that's why it's not staying. Yeah, might have to work with that a little bit. Interesting. But anyway, she does have that, and then of course her ignited lightsaber here, which has a nice transparent blue blade. Uh, that's another running change that was uh, made with this action figure as well, as I think she was originally supposed to have a clear lightsaber blade. It was like a clearish blue, uh, but much more on the white side, I guess. And then they uh, went back and made it more blue for her. And you get her some nice poses. But like I mentioned with the head, uh, let's see if I can do this. I've actually never done it before. I think what you can do is just pop her head out. Let's see here. Yeah, so you pop the head off. And it goes underneath here. Then the cape is actually a separate accessory. This looks like a cape that would go with slide more. Then if you wanted to, you could have her looking like this. Which we do see her in the Clone Wars series like this every now and then. It does have a little bit of the draft neck, but it's not too bad. It's a unique look for her. As you can see, she has the head wrap around her, basically. So, pretty interesting. But, I think Barris looks much better with her hood on. So, that's how I'm going to keep her. Pretty easy to put together. Yeah. And normally uh, I keep her in the pose that you saw her in at the beginning of the video. I think she looks pretty good like that. Between having the poofy skirt. And holding the blade like she's about ready to go in the battle. It's very nice. And this first version has the painted face, while obviously this uh, Clone Wars one has the photo rail. I think it's another case where photo rail doesn't really do anything for this action figure. The painted face turned out just fine. I'm very happy with it. Yeah, that hilt's definitely... A little easier to put on this action figure. That's pretty much it I could, uh, for all I can tell you about Bears here. It will bring out her obvious companion. Uh, let's see here. Luminar Unduli from the Black Series line. And I do have this action figure reviewed on the channel as well. Two movie accurate ones. And I really like displaying these two side by side. Definitely one of the 
most popular Jedi duos from the prequels. Of course, you have Anakin and Obi-Wan, and then Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan, but a lot of people forget about uh, Luminara and Barriss here. And of course, here's the Clone Wars ones. And these two are reviewed in the same channel. And then uh, this Luminara here I did individually uh, about six or seven months ago at this point. So now I have the complete sets. I have thought about going back and redoing the reviews for the Clone Wars TVC figures individually at some point. Perhaps I'll do that in the future, similar to what I did with the last wave of the Legacy Collection. I think uh, a lot of people prefer individual videos instead of uh, all grouped together. It's easier to find the video, and then of course if you're looking to see something about a specific action figure, instead of having this long 30 minute video uh, watching all of them together, you can pick out the individual ones. So perhaps I'll do that at some point. All very nice action figures. But anyways, would I recommend this Bears for your collection? I totally would. Um, prices these days are kind of expensive. I actually got this uh, Barris a little bit later in years. I think it was... I got her at the same time I got the original Shea Vizsla. And I got her off Amazon for $18 brand new back in 2018. And it seemed like at that time, uh, Barris, even brand new in the package, was pretty easy and affordable to get a hold of. Uh, but I think in the last six years now at this point, it seems like the prices for her have jumped up significantly. I was just looking on eBay the other day, and it seems like the cheapest one I could find was maybe $60 brand new. Which I think is kind of ridiculous, but you know, it's a very nice action figure. It's the best Barris we've ever gotten. Uh, it's movie accurate. There are other good Barris action figures out there. Um, the Clone Wars one, I do hope to get a hold of that one at some point. Uh, there is one from the Saga line, which is more pre-posed and more of an action scene. Uh, I do hope to get that one at some point, but of course, if you're looking for a little bit more of a neutral one, this is the one to get. Then, of course, this uh, Clone Wars Bears here is still pretty easy to get a hold of. I think she's even at the discount chains, usually. So, something to take note of. But overall, happy to have Barris Alfie in my collection. It's been, what, six, seven years now for this one. And I cherish her greatly. But anyways, that concludes this review. I hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned for plenty more reviews in the future. There will always be more to come. If you haven't already, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. I always appreciate all your support. And check out some links in the description if you haven't done so already. As always, thanks for watching.